and welcome. One other announcement on the table back there by where the offering plate generally is. Uh, there's a handout of just some things on that complement the message today. Some thoughts for you to take home with you. Well, before we get into God's word, let's go before him in prayer. Our Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity of being here. We pray for all those that are traveling during this weekend event of Thanksgiving. We pray for those that are sick. Lord, and especially we lift up Dee Chapman. Her and John are going to be heading down to Bettendorf this weekend or later today. Father, her brother's in hospice. And so, Father, we pray for your comfort. We pray for them to have opportunity to offer your comfort, Lord, to them. Father, we give you the honor and the glory. Father, we also pray for all the other Bible-believing churches around the tri-state area. We ask, Father, that as your children gather together, that their hearts would be challenged, that they would be blessed, that they, as a result of whatever message is shared, that they may grow closer to you. And Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor and glory and praise. And thank you for our visitors this morning. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A little boy was asked by his father to say grace for the meal. While the rest of the family waited patiently, the little guy eyed every dish that his mother had prepared. And after a full examination by this young man, he bowed his head and he honestly prayed, Lord, I don't like the looks of it, but I thank you for it, and I'll eat it anyway. Amen. Sometimes in life we may feel that way. But gratitude is something that uh, the Bible speaks a lot about, and it's one of the greatest open secrets, if you will, of the Bible. And that is, God owns pleasure regarding gratitude. God gets great pleasure out of us being grateful, thankful. Our gratitude towards others and our gratitude, even more importantly, our gratitude towards God. You know, it's so easy to thank God when everything is going well. It's another thing to thank him when your life seems to be in an upheaval and you don't know what to do and you don't know which way to go and maybe you're hurting greatly inside. But God desires our gratefulness, our thankfulness. Sometimes we don't feel grateful because we are hurt or disappointed and feel virtually justified for that hurt. Or we, have, we may not have come to see behind the disappointment that behind that disappointment that you experience in your life is a loving God who really, really cares for you and who has permitted something for our good, but it's something that we have yet to see. Consider this, the hurt that counts. Marie Pauli Thiel of Metz, France, was only three years old. She has received the bronze medal for an act of courage and dangerous sacrifice. But the one she rescued doesn't like her. The story goes like this. When, Mar when Mary Marie's payment, er, playmate 
two, two-year-old Dennis fell into the municipal pool, she grabbed him by his hair and held his head out of the water until her screams were finally noticed and answered. Said Marie, he doesn't like me now because it hurt when I pulled his hair. Think about that for a moment. Sometimes we go through things that hurt. But we don't see the fact that maybe we're drowning or maybe that we're on a precipice and ready to take a fall. And someone knocks us out of the way and we get upset because they knocked us. Three principles worth memorizing. One, God loves gratitude. Two, he hates ingratitude. And three, gratitude must be taught. And this is especially important for us as parents, not only so that we can model it to our children, but so that our children learn it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, For men will be, be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, and unholy. One of the things that we notice in today's society is that there is an attitude of entitlement. And when you feel entitled, no matter how much you get, you feel you're entitled to more. Sometimes we see it when we give something to a child for something that they did, and somebody else says, another child says, well, that's not fair. I hear that sometimes back there when I give out candy after the service, you know, one child will get maybe some red Skittles and somebody else gets purple and they go, well, I want red. Well, that's all the red I had. Well, that's not fair, you know. And we don't understand the significance, the importance of what gratitude does, not only for those that are witnesses, if you will, but for our own heart. Three passages that the Holy Spirit has used to wake me up in this matter was the first one is in Psalm 103 that I'd encourage us to look at later. But in there it states that we should forget. Bless the Lord in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. What are his benefits? He goes on and he The psalmist lists some of those benefits. But how many more? The fact that you're here today, that you're in good health or relatively good health, you're still breathing, your heart's still working, you have food on the table, you come into church and there's donuts, there's coffee, there's tea, there's weather outside. There's a 100% chance of weather again tomorrow. And we can be grateful for it no matter which way it takes. The second verse is in Luke 17 and verse 17. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Here, imagine you have the If you will, you have leprosy and you're going to die. And you're going to be separated. You're considered unclean. And little by little, your flesh falls off. Your fingers become nubs. And it eats away at your body. And so you have a death sentence. And then along comes this one that some say is the Messiah. Others say, well, he can heal people and So these ten go to Jesus and they say, have mercy. 
have mercy on us. He gives them a simple task to do. He says, go show yourself to the priest. And as they go, they obeyed. As they go, they were cleansed. One of them, just one out of ten, that had the death sentence, now have life again. And only one came back. Jesus said, there were ten. Where are the nine? Where are the grateful hearts? Romans 1.21, it says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. You know, I can remember some years ago, I looked at that verse and I, I thought, why'd God put that in there? Why couldn't he have said, for even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or have the right doctrine or go to the right church in town or do the right things? Why of all things did God put or give thanks? Because when we lose the attitude of gratitude, when we cease giving thanks, we open ourselves up to deceit from the adversary. And our hearts can start to become hardened. It goes on to say, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. You want a darkened heart? Cease giving thanks. A grateful heart is a heart that just enjoys everything about the Lord. And you go out in society and rather than complain about everything that's going on, you know that God is going to... The economy is bad, but God will supply my needs. Right? We have something to be thankful for. Things are in a turmoil across the nation. But God is my protector and deliverer. We could go through a myriad of things and give thanks if we're tuned in. Teaching gratitude. Now this is the responsibility of not only the, the pastors, spiritual leaders, but it's also the responsibility of the parents. It's the responsibility of the parents. Children must be taught to be thankful. They must be taught that. I don't know that it comes naturally. Take it and run when they're given something. Most of us don't appreciate our own earthly parents for some years. You know, you go through those teenage years and your parents don't know anything and you know everything and then you graduate and move out on your own and you realize that it's what you learn after you know everything that really makes a difference in your life. And you start to appreciate your parents' wisdom and the guidance and the things that they didn't let you do just because everyone else was doing it. Which, by the way, until you join that group, not everybody's doing it. As we grow up, we tend to, during those teenage years especially, we tend to resent our parents. And when we are older, we can see not only their frailties. None of our parents were perfect, but they were our perfect parents. God gave us to them. He gave them the chore, if you will, and the privilege of raising us up. But we're able to see as we get older, we're able to see that they weren't perfect, but they did the best they could. I can appreciate that. 
I think you can too if you think about it. The sooner children are taught gratitude, the better off they'll be. They are made to see things for which they ought to be thankful. You know, every time I go into a store or come out of a store, I hold the door for whoever's going in or out. And I don't do it to be thanked, but I notice that a lot of people don't thank you. They're entitled to have you open the door and hold it for them. Or the little gifts. They have a commercial on TV of a child who gets a bicycle and it, it doesn't suit him. And so he throws the bicycle down in the living room and stomps off. I thought, I can sell that bicycle real quick. And then see where he'll be. Also, if it's not pointed out, if we as adults don't point out things to be grateful for, it's probably never going to enter or cross the minds when they, of things that they should be thankful for. Husbands, how often do you thank your wife for the meal she's prepared for you? Especially if it's something that you really like. Or the fact that she labors all day long for the younger mothers, labors all day long with all those kids, and then somehow or another she manages to get the house clean and she manages to prepare a meal to your liking. Do you thank her? So many simple things in life that we take for granted. The fifth commandment is this. Honor your father and mother so that, you're, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. In Exodus 20 and verse 12. And then Paul referred to this as in Ephesians 6, 2, as the first commandment with a promise. It's the first commandment that God gave with a promise. This means that God provided a motivation. A motivation for showing gratitude to our parents. It's also, not only is it the responsibility of parents, but it's the responsibility of spiritual leaders. Some don't talk on things like this because they risk offending people because they're not very grateful. And they're not very grateful for a sermon that tells them they should be. But yet it shows that we truly respect. As one of your pastors, we respect each of you and desire God's best for you. And if somehow or another we step on your toes or maybe even at times stomp on your toes, realize that maybe God is speaking to you about what was said. Rather than take offense, like when Jesus told his disciples, somebody, one of you is going to betray me, and they go, Lord, is it I? Now surely we wouldn't think if it were, you know, if I was one of his apostles, I wouldn't think it was me. But they understood something that sometimes we can miss. We're frail, weak people. And sometimes messages, God is looking to teach you, to instruct your heart, so that we can be conformed to the image of his beloved Son. We don't want to withhold good from you. Joshua, when you consider some examples of teaching gratitude, Moses is the first one who gave the Ten Commandments. 
That taught Israel how to worship, how to, how to praise God, how to give God thanks. The Ten Commandments equally taught Israel how to be thankful. In Deuteronomy 4, 9, God instructs this, Only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and make them known to your sons and your daughters. What had they seen? They had seen the provision of God. They'd seen their nation liberated, if you will, from slavery. They had seen God part the Red Sea. They'd get to see manna from heaven as God supplied for them bread every day. Miracle after miracle after miracle. And beloved, there are miracles that take place within your realm every day that we're just not aware of. Where God acts on our behalf. One of the ones that has always stood out to me was we were running five minutes late to get to some place that we needed to be and we were heading down the highway and I was really pushing grace. Okay? Trying to make up time and then we came upon an accident and there were police and there was car parts all over the place. And the people in both vehicles, there was two people, if I remember correctly, two people in one and one in the other that all died. What if we had been on time? Would we have been one of those vehicles? You know, sometimes we don't think of things like that. But I believe God has his hands on the wheel. Not only of my vehicle, but also of my life. And our hearts are to be like water where he can steer it wherever he wants it to go. Then there was Joshua, who would not let Israel forget. In Joshua chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, let this be a sign among you so that when your children ask later, what do these stones mean? Then you shall say to them, because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed the Jordan, the water of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be a memorial to the sons of Israel. Think of that. Joshua built a memorial because they were going and taking the ark and heading towards the promised land and they had to cross the Jordan and yet the waters were flowing heavily and God stopped the waters. Much like he parted the Red Sea so that they could get across. And so Joshua built a memorial so that his that he would not forget, so that his children and children's children, for generations they would remember. The Jews still celebrate what Esther did. They still celebrate the freedom that they found in Egypt land during the Passover. They still look and they remember these things, how God acted on their behalf. And they're grateful. In one word here, or in a word, Joshua was teaching the children of Israel to be grateful, to be thankful for what God did. Then there was Samuel who taught Israel to remember God's deliverance over the Philistines at a critical time. In 1 Samuel 7, 12, it says, Then 
Samuel took a stone and set it between Mispath and Shen and named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Thus far the Lord has helped us. I look back over my life, and I see it so very, very many ways that God has helped us. You know, we've had six kids, and we almost lost five out of the six in different, different uh, accidents, if you will. And we prayed, and we saw God deliver, and we still have all six. We don't forget it. Every time I see my son or sons, it was all five of my sons, not my daughter. She's the only one that didn't have that. I don't know. God gave extra grace there with my daughter. Maybe she couldn't have handled it. <laughs> but, uh, but every time I see them, I'm reminded. Every time I see my grandchildren or great, you look and you remember that they wouldn't be here today had not God shown mercy. You're reminded and your heart fills with gratitude. Then there was David who taught the fear of the Lord. Sometimes the fear of the Lord is spontaneous, like gratitude can be spontaneous. In Acts 2.43 it says, And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. They stood in awe of God. And then in Acts 5.11, And great fear came over the whole church, and upon all who heard of these things. Imagine when, (coughs) excuse me, Ananias and Sapphira, They sought to deceive the apostles. And as a result, Peter says, why has Satan filled your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Who were they talking to? Who were they talking about with Ananias and Sapphira? They had lied to the apostles. But Peter said, you've lied to God. And they were both struck dead. And the people stood in awe of the fear of the Lord. There's not much fear of the Lord in the world today. And I'm not talking about the world in general. I'm talking about in the Christian world. Few of us take sin seriously, and that's why sin seriously takes us, and we have a hard time walking, because we don't see God for the holy holy God that he is. In Psalm 34, 11, come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. You know, I think that, personally, I think that one of the simplest ways of having a grateful heart is having a proper respect and fear of the Lord for who he is. Jesus, who shows his disappointment, with that one leper, when only one leper came back to thank him. Ten lepers called out in a loud voice in Luke 17, 13. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus answered their request, and it says, And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them when he saw he was healed, turned back, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving thanks to him. 
and he was a Samaritan. I find it interesting that when Jesus is dealing with Samaritans, he always mentions it. Why? Because they were hated by the Jews. They were called half-breeds. And it's a, a Samaritan. By those that hated him, Jesus was a Jew, so it might be assumed that he would hate me like all the other Jews. But when I found myself healed, I went back and I thanked him. And then in verse 17, the verse that I mentioned earlier, Jesus answered and said, We're not ten cleansed, but the nine. Where are they? Where are they? And that comment, Jesus gave no small hint how much God loves gratitude and hates ingratitude. When we're ungrateful, we're ungrateful that God hasn't done something that we had expectations of him doing. Paul also taught gratitude, to show gratitude when we ask for things. He says in Philippians 4, 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And to show gratitude in all situations. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I hear people say, say sometimes, you know, I wish I knew what God's will for me was. Well, there are places where he lays it out in no unmistakable way. Here he says, this is my will for you. In everything, give thanks. If we put that into practice in our life, we'd see our life change quite a bit. James taught us to dignify every trial. He says, consider it all, or pure joy, my brethren, when you encounter Various trials. When was the last time you thanked God for some trial that you were going through? Oh, we thank him when we're through it. When it's all over. But when was the last time that you thanked him when you're in it? Have you ever given thanks? Maybe for an illness that you're going through. I talked to somebody a few weeks back that found out they had cancer. They said, I thank God for cancer. And I was waiting to hear what he had to say after that, thinking maybe he was going to joke or something. And he said, you know, he says, it wasn't until I had cancer that I realized how much in life I had to be thankful for. He said, so for whatever time I have left, I'm going to thank God for everything. I thought that's a good thing to learn. Would that we would all learn it a lot sooner. Matthew Henry, the Bible commentator that's well well known. He wrote this. He was robbed, okay? And after he was robbed, he wrote in his diary the following Let me be thankful, first, because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my wallet, they did not take my life. Third, because although they took my all, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. 
Think about that one. During World War II, a soldier in the American Third Army was sent to rest, to a rest camp after a period of active service. When he returned, he wrote a letter to General George Patton and thanked him for the splendid care he had received at the rest camp. General Patton wrote back that for 35 years he sought to give all the comfort and convenience he could to his men and added that this was the first letter of thanks he had received in all his years in the army. Do we find that shocking? That we might, well, I earned it. We need a little R&R now and then. Or can we be grateful? Learning gratefulness, it must be taught, but it also will be caught. If you as parents show gratitude, your children will catch on. And you can teach them, but you'll, they'll also see the example of it in their home. This means that we take gratitude on board. It becomes my responsibility to show gratitude in my home. This means that we have absorbed the importance of being grateful. It means that it has become a part of our lives. And it means that it has become a part of our worship. We sing songs of praise and give glory to God. Let's make sure that that praise is coming from the heart and not just because maybe a certain song stirs your emotions or a song that you really like. Learning gratitude is basically remembering to be thankful for everything. Part of the purpose of the Lord's Supper, it says when he had broken bread, he gave thanks. When he took the cup, he gave thanks. And we, therefore, must be disciplined ourselves to remember. To remember. We remember to be at work on time. Be thankful you have a job. We remember to pay our bills. We can be thankful that we have money to do so. We can remember to plan for our holiday. We, my wife had a lot of planning for our Thanksgiving, and we had 30-some people there, I believe. That's a lot of people in a house. But what a blessing it is. And she was able to do all those preparations and make all that great food. We can be thankful for holidays when our families will get together because there will come a time when you'll see an empty chair or maybe two or three. So as long as we have breath, let's praise the Lord and thank him for some of the bountiful gifts that he gives. Let me share a few practical ways that we can learn to be grateful. Tell people that who have been a blessing to you. That's a very simple thing and a practical thing. Maybe the waitress that serves you with a smile. Your parents. I, for one, looked up a lot of my old teachers, the ones that made a difference. Those were the ones that they were the hardest on me and the ones that I was the hardest on them. And little did I realize it until I called the one and he said, I would have thought somebody would have killed you before now. And then he told me why, and I 
couldn't remember being that bad. Or I should say, being that mouthy. But I called him up to thank him. It took some doings to track down teachers you haven't seen in over 50 years. But thanking them. Call your parents. Tell them how much you appreciate them and the love that they've shown you. Maybe some of the things that they have done. The fact that they were always there when you needed a shoulder to cry on. Tell your pastor, one of your pastors or church leaders that you appreciate something they shared. For me, I have, I have a week. I can work on messages, but John and Tim and Brian, they're full-time at a job, and they got to find time in between small groups and prayer meetings and other things to put together a message as they pray and seek God's leading on what to share with you all. Thank them for their labors. They work hard to honor God and honor you by giving you the truth from God's word. Tell your friends. I had a friend that just passed a month ago. Took a fall. His and my birthdays were two days apart. We've been friends for a long, long time. And I, generally speaking, when I'm with someone, I let them know that I appreciate their time their sacrifice to get together with me or to whatever or sharing old memories and thanking them for the memories. He took a fall at his home and that was it. And he stepped into eternity. What friends you have, tell them today. If you need to tell somebody that you love them, tell them today. If you need to tell somebody that you forgive them, tell them today. If you need to tell somebody that you appreciate their part, their being a part of your life, tell them today. Because there's no guarantee that you'll see them tomorrow. Tell your boss when he or she is good to you. If you're a manager, tell your staff when they are being particularly helpful. Count your blessings to God in that verse we read in Philippians 4, 6. Recall yesterday's good things. Recount blessings from God over the years. Maybe some things recently. Some of you are, have been married many years When was the last time you thanked God for your spouse? You see, marriages fall apart all the time. The divorce rate amongst Christians and non-Christians is almost the same. Part of that can be attributed maybe to a lack of the fear of the Lord or other things, but You know, as our society gets closer to the end, when the Lord comes back, things are going to get harder. You already see the attempts in media just saying uh, bad things, if you will, about Christians. I'll put it that way. Think about the blessings. Think about the things about God himself and his word. Thank him for being who he is. Thank him for Jesus and his blood that was spilt for you. Thank him for the Holy Spirit 
who indwells us and teaches us all good things. Thank him for the Bible. Thank him for saving you. You know, I remember back shortly after I got saved and I read about how Jesus prayed through the night and I thought, wow, that is really neat. I'm going to do it. Well, about three minutes into the prayer, I prayed about it for everything I could think of. And so then I said, thank you, Lord, for this knuckle that works, for this knuckle that works. And I basically worked through it. You might say it was stupid, but understand that my motive in it was to see what it would be like to talk with God all night long. And even when going through, I started going through, I pulled out the yearbook, this one, this one, this one, this one, started praying for all my classmates. And you know what? I never did reach all the way till morning. Even with everything I could possibly muster up to pray about, it taught me a valuable lesson. that we need to learn our dependence upon God and our gratefulness to him for all that he has done. And let me say in closing here this morning, it's been many years since I recall singing this song, but this one song says it all. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. When we take the time to show gratitude to God, when we take the time to really pour out our hearts in thanksgiving, you might be amazed at things that he brings to mind to help us in being grateful. We have an awful lot to be grateful for, do we not? And if you're not sure, get alone with God and ask him to speak to your heart because our lives are blessed so much more than we could ever deserve. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time here together this morning. We pray, Father, that our hearts would be filled with gratitude, that we would not take things for granted Everybody in this auditorium this morning is breathing. Yet how many of us think about thanking you for the breath that we breathe until we have lost it? Or thank, thanking you, Lord, that our heart's still beating until at some point when it stops. So much to be grateful for. Lord, may we be consumed with your grateful, with your holiness, your love. May we be filled with a grateful heart. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen.